Hello, and welcome to another episode of Binding Roll, where we play 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons in the world of the Ninth Age. Um, if you're enjoying this show, please hit that subscribe button. But uh, on, if you are unfamiliar with the Ninth Age, it is a tabletop wargaming strategy game that I play all the time, and I love very much, and I dedicate this channel to. If you are unfamiliar with it, please hit the link in the description below. It'll take you right to the official website. And it'll get you connected with other players and all the information you could ever need. So, but today we're playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons. So let's go ahead and talk to our players. Well, okay, guys, this week we did level up. So let's start with the usual questions. What you drinking and what, uh, what did you get with your new level? I am drinking... A beer from Port from Breakside, which is in Portland, Oregon. And this is Wanderlust IPA. Picked it up at Trader Joe's. Kalen, let me hear it. All right. Well, Kikoman is best known for their soy sauce, but they also make alcoholic beverages as well. Uh, this really? is a liter and a half of plum wine. Uh, I can't get the focus with the background because it's not a face, but uh, yeah. 23 proof. Kikoman and, uh, blood yeah. wine. Yep, Kikoman blood wine. Or plum wine. <laughs> blood wine would be awesome. Uh oh. I hit some your, cables. I lost some camera, things. Your camera uh, just went out. Cameras. There you go. You're back. All right. You're back. There we go. <laughs> I should rearrange this. Uh, and not much with uh, level 10. I can head in plain sight. I spent some time to do some cool camouflage stuff, and yeah, not a whole lot with uh, going to level 10 for the Ranger. The, uh, we're, we're definitely in the linear fighter-esque and then quadratic wizard spellcaster sort of limitations, so yeah. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Uh, load, let's hear it. All right. Well, I actually have two classics here this evening. I, I have to mention them both because they're both epic. Uh, we've got a Sam Adams and some... God, Sierra I'm Nevada. still terrible at this. Some Sierra <laughs> Nevada Pale Ale. Two um, classics. Two classics. Yes. Excellent. Um, and then with level 10... I got also slightly underwhelming, but uh, I have Spirit Walker. You can cast the commune spell, commune with nature spell as a ritual. So I don't think anybody in this party is patient enough for a ritual. So <laughs> well, that's a good question. Why would you ever cast that as a ritual? Not as a ritual. Doesn't like, use a, doesn't use a slot. Oh. Yeah. So it takes good, it takes ten have. minutes, but it. Um, it doesn't use a slot, so interesting. But that. it's basically an RP tool for the barbarian, because that's what is it like six hundred rounds of combat or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Sure, true. I'm sure that math is off, but I'm sure you'll you get my never point. Use uh, that, but whatever. One hour. One minute is ten six rounds. Six seconds. Yeah, only ten rounds. So yeah, it's six Why are you thinking about this? Don't waste your brain space, man. All right, Sam. Too late. <laughs> Sam, tell me what you're doing. Um, I'm drinking. Uh, Peroni. Peroni. They're still. Nice. You can't. I see them. And for my upgrade for tenth level. I chose Bountiful Luck, and Bountiful Luck is basically an ability that lets me um, grant my lucky atmosphere to another player. So if anyone else rolls a one on any roll, attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, I can grant you a lucky day, and you can re-roll it. So let me know. Not too bad Sweet. of a skill. Ooh. Wait, so when do you have to decide that? Like, when I roll a one, you can just say, like, oh, now you can use it, or, like, have to start the day with, like, hey, you get luck. Uh, no, it's at, at, it's after the roll has occurred. Oh, that's super flexible. 
Nice. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it, it's pretty good. It, it, it's is it three times per long rest that 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 you can do that? Is that right? Yep. Uh, I have to be able to see you. Yeah, it's could... it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I can like, you know, oh, death save, quick fail. Oh, okay, now I'm not dead. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> yep. With with the luck we had last section, I think could be pretty helpful. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, sunset. What do you what do you got? Uh, well, I'm back again with the uh, strawberry banana uh, kettle sour. I, after I finish this, I'll still have about 64 ounces to go through, so I should be set for another week. <laughs> um, for 10th level, um, I gained another um, meta magic, so I picked up careful spell. Um, because why not? Um, basically, I can spend a sorcery point to allow up to four creatures to automatically succeed on the saving throw uh, of any spell I cast. So, huh. um, so we're going to be standing in some fireballs. <laughs> well, that that was always a risk, but now, now sometimes you might not take full damage. Uh, oh, that's not super reassuring, but yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it all depends on whether or not I want to, you know, maybe change the uh, element of it, or maybe I want to cast it as a uh, bonus action instead. Like, yeah, I've got options. Um, and then I was also able to pick up another cantrip, so I got Mage Hand, and then I also picked up the third level spell, Slow, which should be very beneficial to much of the party. Sweet. All right. So to recap last gaming session, we, um, uh, at the beginning of the of the session, the four characters were ejected out of the catacombs into the bay to find themselves in Cantamont of a slightly less than a year, slightly less than a year in the future. Uh, things have obviously changed. Um, it seems that uh, the whole city is on lockdown. You guys made it to the. Unicorns, actually, outside of the built of uh, the of the city, you ran into Claude, who was the the king, uh, the head of the guard. But now he's kind of a vigilante, trying to retake the city and take care of the people who live outside. Uh, once you got inside, you went to the unicorn's bounty, where you ran into the good old Green Knight, because it was about a year later. He laid down a, a beating on Sunset. Um, and then, and then offered the same deal to someone else, and Lode took him up on the offer. Uh, not doing very much damage to him, but he disappeared again. Um, and then you made your way to the keep, where you we realized that was on lockdown. Also, you made it somehow. You made it. Sunset made it to the top of the keep where uh, they found none other than the Duke, who uh, you learned from other people have been, has been in seclusion, have been missing for the past year. But he showed up mindless and uh, determined to thwart the rest of the players from making it into the keep and allowing Sunset to go in to the keep to speak to quote unquote her. And that's where we are now. Uh, Sunset has made it down into the grand room of the keep, where she is confronted with uh, the Duchess sitting on the throne. Uh, Sam, Lode, and Kaylin have, after Sunset went down to the main room, they have tried to uh, follow sunset up the side of the keep and i believe you we ended the session last week with you making it to the top 
but you're approximately 10 to 15 minutes behind sunset. So, let's go ahead and go with sunset first. Sunset, I would like you to go ahead and please take a perception check. Well, let's see if I can do better this week than I did last week. That's not bad. Um, uh, that'll be a 30-20. Uh, what did you roll naturally? Uh, 15. Okay. As you walk down into the Grand Keep, uh, you see the Duke kind of you know, mechanically walk back down the, the the main room and take up a seat, not a seat, but stand beside uh, his wife and look back at you with blank kind of cold eyes uh, and sitting in the, the, the throne of Cantamont in this huge room, huge echoing room where there used to be you know, people, you've been in here where there's parties, there's always at least foreign dignitaries, it's just vacant. There's no one there except for the two of them. Um, hold on, watch this. And then the, uh, and then the Duchess says, Ah, Sunset. Welcome back to Cantamont. It's, it's been a long time since I've seen you. Do those sound effects work? Oh, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> it's a little off-putting. <laughs> uh... Maybe, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll stop the high voice filter. I'll just do the echo next time. But um... Well, I think the echo was the problem. Oh, really? Like, if it were just the high uh, filter, I think it'd be fine. But the I echo I, added over. Because I can't hear it in my ears. There's no monitor, so I can't hear what, I'm, what I sound like, so... Uh, so here's yeah, just the echo. Uh... Test one, two, three, four. And here's the high voice. Test one, two, three, four. Yeah, I, I think the it's any better by itself. The but... combination of the two really kind of just puts it in a in a weird place. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Maybe I don't know if you can turn down the echo. <laughs> like you... I can, but I have to go into my settings and stuff, which I'm not going to do uh, right now. Okay. Yeah, figure um, that okay. out sometime. Uh, and as you, what would you like to do first off? Um. Well, I'm pretty sure we've never actually spoken. As far as I know, she has no idea who I am. So, I'm definitely thinking there's something fishy going on here. Um, I have two theories. Um, we'll see which one of them is right. <laughs> uh, but I'm not going to say anything at this time. I'm going okay, to let her speak. Okay, you are currently on, like, the far end from her of the Grand Room. Do you want to... Well, I'll, I'll move forward cautiously, but, okay. you know... Um... As you get a little closer, you get a little bit of a better look at what she's wearing, and she's wearing, you know, one of the fine dresses of the Duchess, uh, uh, dresses that she's worn before. But what you notice around her neck is the amulet that you, that um, Calypso took from you and left in the catacombs. And the, I'm sorry, yeah, the one that that um, Vespasian, Vespasian had, yeah. Okay, so it's leaning towards that one. Um. But no, wait, let's time warp. Time warp. <laughs> We're going up on top of the keep. <laughs> Sam, Kalen, load. You've uh, after a fair amount of time of trying to. Um, scale the side of the building you eventually make it to the top um at this time you're you look up and you um you are directly under the the tower which was previously whole and has been you know 
toppled over. The top has been broken off and toppled over since your time travel. Um, all of a sudden, you, as you get to the top, you hear a loud screech run through the air, like a echo off the sides of buildings and go across the city. And then a uh, the half second later, you hear like a uh, a returning screech, like caw almost. Uh, and out of the destroyed tower, two looks like sh the bird forms come up out, and then two giant hippogriffs land on the keep wall in front of you, which is the direction you need. That's the direction that sunset went. So they're they're blocking our way now. Correct. Of course. They, they seem like the ones that uh, we liberated around a year ago, all grown <laughs> up. <laughs> that could definitely be the case. Hmm. <laughs> Caleb's Do they... the only one that re would recognize them. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, are they... So they just happen to be up there. Are they taking sort of a aggressive stance? You know, ready to attack or just chilling, enjoying the view? Uh, they are... They are... They are actively have their eyes on you and are putting themselves intentionally in your way. Do they fully block the area yeah they're or... big now. they're big they're okay. the size like their bodies the size of like a like a Clydesdale like a big horse yeah and then their wingspan is what like 10 feet wingspan yeah sounds hmm. reasonable all right do we have 10 minutes because I can cast speak with animals <laughs> as a ritual <laughs> Or <laughs> different from the one I got today. Everyone, just everyone, slide. just give me ten minutes. Whatever, stay where you are. Just give me ten minutes. I mm. mean, there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of urgency, but like, is that a level one slot? Okay, how many slots you got? Or he doesn't like, have any. Yeah, no slots. Don't have any slots. slots. Yeah. Mm. yeah, that's okay, why that's he has attached them. Is that, that's why yeah. Yeah. I'll, Alternatively, I have a plus one to animal handling, but that's a wisdom, and we all know how good load is at that. Yeah, I have like ensnaring strike and pass without a trace, but pass without a trace is going to be kind of hard to. I'm sure it won't be go, go so well if they are already staring us down and then try to cast it. And like, hey, what's this shadowy vapors? Can't probably just ignore them. Probably nothing. Um, so, yeah, I'm not in a condition where I can fight two of these. So, uh, yeah, I will enjoy the the view and you know admire how the scenery has changed over your area. Maybe it's it's a grand city. There's a lot to see that I can keep myself. It's true. You are you are high minutes. up. You are definitely high yeah. up in the city right now, and you have a, a view the of the city. city sprawling out to the east. You can ah, see. I'm, I'm curious. Yeah, the old door uh, part of the city and uh, what's left of the mansion. I'm most curious. Oh, that's a good point. So uh, you look over and um, the the door mansion is is a prominent building. Like you can you can see it from where you are, and you can see that it is currently under construction. Oh. Uh, it's obvious that it, when you were there last time, it burned, uh, but there's no more burnt building there. There's kind of the the remains, and then new walls and roof are being built on top of it. the The whole area of the city where the was the door area of the city, like you can't see an outline or anything, but that portion of the city, uh, since this is evening time. You can see lights in that whole area. You can see movement. It's an inhabited part of the city. It's not like abandoned or anything. 
Like a, is it being constructed of uh, wood or stone? Wood. Oh. Okay. We can, we can, uh, we can go round two on this. Um, although we did start the fire. That's not our fault. Change the color, perhaps, but didn't start it. <laughs> um, all right. It's true. Yeah, load. Do your, do your thing. Um, yeah. Wow, I didn't expect to ever use this. Um, okay. <laughs> Sam, hey, do you want to do anything? There we go. <laughs> yeah. Do you have another? Sam just had a drink in real life, so I, you know. No, this is just got a good idea. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so you start the ritual, kind of like uh, you you take out of your belt a twig of the forest, of the trees in the forest around the area, and you begin concentrating on it. The um, the hippogriffs do not seem to be attacking or retreating either. They seem to be there um, watching you. So this takes 10 minutes, so we're going to jump back to Sunset. Sunset, uh, what do you want to do? Don't die. I'm, 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 I'm still waiting. I'm not going to speak first. You okay. welcomed me back, but I'm waiting to hear... Clearly, she wants something. Uh, I'm not going to do the sound effects, but uh, the Duchess says, "Ah, <laughs> what you want? You want? Okay, here we go. Give the people what they want." The Duchess says, "Sunset is. It is a." good time, a very fortuitous time for you to return to the city. As you can see, the city is in peril. The, the city is shut for its protection, but it festers from within. I need your help, Sunset, to rid Cantamont of its cancer which is the, the interloper and the, the, foreigner, the foreigner who has come to, into our Equitanian midst and has turned this city into her own piggy bank. I know you have run into her before. Calypso. The, the pirate thief has taken up residency in the old house door. I need you to rid her, rid this city of her. Uh, can I roll insight to see if uh, there's any sort of uh... If if she's telling the whole truth, there, I I, yeah. I have my suspicions about certain things and. Um, Insight is a wisdom check, right? Yes. So I I, it would be a contested, uh, role against, either uh I I assume either. Uh, persuasion or deception, depending on what exactly is going on. Mm -hmm. um, well, I rolled a 13, so we'll see if that gets me anything. Um, you... The Duchess seems as she was before. You had very limited contact with her, but you trusted her. And she had... you, Her and the Duke have never let you down uh doesn't seem that she is under distress the only thing that you find confusing is that she's wearing this amulet yeah that's, that's the part that i don't particularly like 
Um, and maybe this is part of the 13 I rolled for insight, but does she, is she exhibiting any mannerisms that uh, would uh, identify her as Calypso as opposed to the Duchess? Uh, she's got no mannerisms at all right now. She is just sitting there, like straight back, very, okay. very regal, you know, queen like, you know, her hands folded in her lap, straight back. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, uh, I don't trust this one bit, but, um, I'll, uh, I'll play nice for now and say, um, that can be arranged. What, uh, uh very good. What, what can you offer me in return? This should not be news to her. <laughs> good sunset. Uh, I have nothing in return. This, the cantamont is in an hour of need. And I need you to heed this call out of the goodness of your heart. Barking up the wrong tree, lady. <laughs> I, 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 I chuckle a bit and say, we'll see. Um. And um, I guess with that, I'm going to turn to leave and see what happens. Sunset, that is not the answer I wanted to hear. And she, and she frowns and kind of kind of goes, <gasps> sighs. Oh, I, I believe she misunderstood the uh we'll see was in reference to um having nothing to offer me i'll say that out loud <laughs> she says sunset before please sunset before you leave one uh one last request hopefully this will meet your expectations I'll pause and, and turn. Mm. We'll, we'll see if this goes right. Hold on. We'll listen to this. She goes, Sunset, I will ask you for the last time. Rid this city of Calypso. And with that, I need you to take a... Uh. Uh, cons no, what's the right one? Uh, this would be a contested wisdom. Well, I mean, what's what's she trying to do? I'm not gonna tell you, but it's magical. I do need to know if she, if she's trying to charm me. It didn't sound I guess like this, it. I guess this is a charm, yeah. Yeah, because I get advantage on those rolls. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, against charm, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, true. Um, yeah, it would probably be wisdom. Okay. Okay. Uh, saving throw, right? Uh, this, this is going to be a contested. So that's not a saving oh, throw. Oh, right? so just, just a straight roll. Okay. So that, uh, well, I, I guess it wouldn't particularly matter. Um, so starting off strong with a 19. Mm hmm. Um,. Oh, wow. Uh, that's also a 19. <laughs> 19. Um, yes. as, you, as you hear these words echo in your head, your memories start to relapse of the memories you have in the city. And the memories of all that you've experienced in the city. And it's... And for some reason, in the back of your head, a, a kernel of respect and admiration grows for the Duchess. In particular, not the Duke. 
just the Duchess. Oh, I... I know exactly what this is. Yes, it would be a charm. Uh, yes, technically it would have been a saving throw. Um, but... Uh, it wouldn't have mattered. My rolls would be would have been the same. Um, okay. So this isn't this isn't gonna like control your actions, but your let's just well, say. Well, I mean, I was gonna do it anyway. Yeah, your like, priority. The, the, the whole... Your priority is to to seek out Calypso. Um. But you're unconcerned right now about Wait. the money, and I think if you complete the the with the task you will can be concerned about the money afterwards. Uh, yeah, I mean, the uh, the goal here wasn't necessarily monetary gain. Uh, uh, or not, not necessarily the any, money, any, just the reward. The re just the, the, a reward of some sort, power, influence, favors, all acceptable. Um, but yeah, no, this is this is good. I like it. Okay, um, and with that, we're going to warp back to Sam, Lode, and Kaylin. You have successfully completed your ritual with these these two birds still standing in front of you, and kind of eventually, and with your meditation and, and feeling the wind ap across your face on top of this keep and smelling the, the smells of, of, of Equitane and its nature. Um, uh. Not sure if those are nature smells. <laughs> and the hippogriff manure. Um, you start to hear voices, which are the voices of the two hippogriffs in front of you, and they're talking to each other. Uh, one hippogriff is saying, but we, we have to protect the keep. And the other one is saying, but but the Sylvan Elf, the Sylvan Elf freed us. Oh, Not shit. freed us. No, no, no. The Sylvan Elf... Uh, ki ki kidnapped, maybe? Yeah, brought us to our home. So, just to oh. throw something out there, it does in the Speak With Animals spell text say, you might be able to con persuade a beast to perform a small favor for you at the GM's discretion. Yeah, I'm, I want to. I'm, I'm. I'm treating this like. Well, question one: How? What's the duration of the spell? Ten minutes. For these ten minutes, you can converse with the hippogriffs like people and try to persuade them or intimidate them or okay. anything you do to a normal person. Uh, well, if I'm the one who's doing it because I'm the only one who can understand them. Persuasion's probably not going to go great. Uh, you did mention intimidation. That's an interesting thought. Um, I, I start discussing this with the other two that are there, Sam and Kaylin. Um, you know, That's a I good tell question. Them, when, I, when you're, when I can spells, speak to hippogriffs when, now. When the when the spell's active, are you only talking in hippogriff form? So like you try no, to I talk to them and, it, and it, so. to hear to hit them, you're hearing like. Hello. No, <laughs> it's the <laughs> ability to comprehend yeah. and verbally communicate. You are not. Right. You are forced now to speak hippogriff for ten. Yeah, minutes. it's it's actually it's uh, my understanding of it is that it's more of an aura uh, that extends out from the caster that allows the animals to communicate with you, not oh, the other way okay, around. Okay, okay, okay. So, but it's only effective for the caster, essentially. Yeah. Um, well, okay, okay, so he can, talk, he can talk to us in common. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. what do you guys want to do? Should we... <laughs> I'm not particularly charming. Um, well, I think if you try to persuade them and Kaelin assists you, since they're friendly with Kaelin, you would get advantage on your rolls, right? I mean, yeah, we can give you advantage by, I don't know, firming you up and making you more... I can say, <laughs> you know, I'm here with this Sylvan Elf, who I understand at one point helped you out. 
Um, and we were perhaps looking for you to help us out by letting us buy to enter yeah. the keep. And, and we have fought numerous battles, battles within the keep to protect its inhabitants. So, uh, and the other person who saved you, the other Sylvan elf, is actually already in there. So we're just kind of. <laughs> My, my friend is in there. My, my, my friend is there already. In the yeah. Game. They like in. let them. It's like, oh, damn it! Well, and we got past. Wait, stop the other ones. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, the first, the just... first thing you realize is when you speak to Sam and Kaylin, um, the hippogriffs perk up, and you hear them say, uh, "Like it was just like confusion. Like how, how can I, how can I understand you?" So they're, you're, they're, they understand you talking to Sam and Kaylin. So you're going to make me spend my 10 minutes explaining to these hippogriffs how no, no, I no, can no, understand no, no, no. them? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm being an, an asshole. So, and then you turn and describe to them that you want to get into the keep. Um, and they want you want to let them buy and that the other sylvan elf is inside that freed them. Not freed them, took them to their home. Um, let's see here. First, yeah, okay. So give me, um, give me a persuade, uh, persuasion check. I add advantage with Kaylin being there. Right. Advantage. Got yeah. roll. Fourteen. And again? Yeah, so... I rolled a 13 and a 14. Oh, okay. And that's a wisdom... Uh, persuasion's charisma? Yes. Yes. So as, you, as you're explaining this to the hippogriffs, um, and you mention the fact that Sunset is in the keep below, they... Um, they, you know, like, like a dog, you know, like a dog when it's mad, it's got that, like, you know... Uh, stance where it's muscular and ready it kind of they kind of yeah. sit down on their hind legs and like you know relax and their ears go from back to forward and um and they say yes yes we uh we love we love the sylvanels we love them too they they say they they bring us to a nice place we are here we are here we want to help the Sylvan Elves, but the Queen says protect the keep. Hmm. Okay. Uh, What'd they say? Well, yeah, I convey that. I look puzzled up into the air with my stroking my beard for a moment and then I kind of snap out of it and say oh yeah uh, this is what they said uh, well, but what I'm thinking yeah. is that it sounds like we might be able to convince them to that helping us would be helping the people and maybe we could get them to come with us yeah. we, we defended the keep before so letting us in pet. is Helping us, uh, I'm just helping waiting us for me, me to, to show up because I'm trying to bring two so, hippogriffs with us. So, so yeah. many options. So many options. I could use um, a new ride. Yeah, right? <laughs> so specifically, can I convince them since they don't appear to be Basically, your, your first persuasion role the... is you successfully, they're not, they're not going to attack you anymore. They're not necessarily like your right. best friends and you can ride them, but they're um, they're not aggressive towards you at this point. Um, well, I'm talking about potentially doubling down and trying another role to see if I can persuade them to then before, um, before join you us. That, they they kind of stand up and they're kind of just, you know, kind of meandering around the, the top of the keep. They're not kind of talking with each other, talking with you, and they, they ask, and they say, who are you and the halfling? Why are you here? Uh, so I say, Lode says, 
uh, I am traveling with these Sylvan Elves, um, trying to help them in their, you know, adventures and with their goals. And don't worry about the halfling, he's cool. <laughs> Okay. I'm start um, to spill snacks out of my bag. That's I love it. Give him snacks. That makes him happy. Oh no! I have way too much dried meat in my bag. So if only I had somewhere to store these or give these to somebody in need. <laughs> okay, so first of all, the hippogriffs see this, and they they're like hungry dogs they like they can't stop themselves from going for the snacks which happen to be in your tiny little halfling hand uh go ahead and give me two separate um dexterity checks <laughs> saves or checks saves 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 <laughs> uh first one's a 23 and second one's a 28. Oh, oh yeah. Fix that. <laughs> so uh, as, that as the hippogriffs come great. in and just like, you know, like gingerly nibble at the end of the, the beef jerky that you're holding in your hand and they get a taste of it and they just go for it and they take a, they almost like, like cut your hand off at the wrist, but you're fast enough where you, you let go of the beef jerky and they just take it away and they throw it up in the air and are chewing it and nah, 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 nah. At this point, they're very happy. Um, uh, load, I'll give you a persuasion check, but I want you to ask them something specific. Like, what do you want them to do for you? Don't just like, be my friend. That's a little too generic. Right, yeah. Um, do you want, want some input? <laughs> yes, please. Okay. I, so, I asked Sam and Kaylin. They are ambivalent about lend us pass, right? Because like, oh, we don't know if they're enemies or friends. Like, what do we do? Well, natural thing is, can the, will will they escort us to the Grand Hall? Right? We'll still be right. under their their watch, and you know, we're buddies with them. That's cool too. Does they don't know? We'll just take us down, and the uh, the Duke will vouch for us. Excellent idea, Sam. Any, any thoughts on that? Sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah, All right, I... give me a persuasion no. at advantage. I'm not sure. Oh, you can't do shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was just going to point something out. Um, nope, but... you, there are men, there is a lot of a lot of stone between us. We can't hear you. <laughs> All right. That's a 10 and a natural one. Whew, barely. Um, Sweet. <laughs> They're like, got that look. yes, yes, we will take you to the queen. They, they don't say anything about the duke. We will take you to the queen as far as we can go. We That's cannot what I fit. To point we out. cannot. We are not allowed in the grand hall because that is for humans. We cannot even fit in the door, but we will wait for you. Fair enough. Okay, let's do that before oh, oh yeah. i explained to them before we go through since we've been hemming and hawing out here for a minute that at some point uh i'm going to not be able to understand them and they won't be able to understand me uh, but i motion to sam for another piece of beef jerky i toss it out there okay i break it in half and just I say while handing each one of them a piece say oh, just remember give we're me your a, friends give me a dexterity check twice oh fine. dexterity save you should have saved should have tossed it <laughs> yep that's a seven ooh and a three which is a crit fail and let's oh, load that was a one though <laughs> Yeah. Could, could we Whoa, see the wait, first wait, wait. piece of uh? Is a, is there a I don't want to burn all of Sam's lucky. I, I can give you a, make it your lucky day. <laughs> I'm gonna reroll. All right. This seems so like a good one of case. them might Thank be worth you. The, one well, of the. Uh, it, it. I think it's only on the the crit fail. The, the one. Yeah. Yeah. The other one. So I got a seven and a ten. Okay. 
Lucy got one hand left. Yep. A two-handed axe will be hard to use. So you, uh, one misses your hand, but the other one, is, you pull it away as fast as you can, but he ends up, like, clipping the top two fingers with his beak and just takes a chunk out of both of them. And you take just six points of damage. He doesn't even, like, okay. bite the finger off. It just, like, you know, like, uh, gnarls it. You know, like, uh, what's, yeah. what's the right word? Squishes it. Like, slamming so it in the car door. Three, three points of damage. Because I'm assuming that's not psychic damage. No, it's not. Slashing damage? Or bludgeon damage? Bludgeon damage. Uh, probably piercing. It's a beak. Yeah, it's piercing. It's yeah, piercing but, damage. But he just said squashing, so... Yeah. Yeah, I I, oh. I equated it more to uh, when you know when you went to the doctor and they pricked your finger to to draw some blood. That's that's kind of what I figured it was like. Oh, uh, squashing damages in sixth edition. <laughs> squashing <laughs> taking help. So uh, the two uh, hippogriffs kind of turn and part ways and take you part of the way there uh, into like kind of like the uh, until you come to a regular human sized door which they cannot fit through uh, but with that we're going to jump back to sunset you have currently been charmed you have a goal set out for you which is to eliminate Calypso which is something I was going to attempt to do anyway, so... Great. I mean, d it, does it really count as a charm if I was going to do it anyway? I mean... I, 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 I think the explanation is pretty good, that it's it, the, the charm eliminated my uh, want for reward at this time. Basically, if, 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 you, if, you find, if you find clips of one for whatever information that is revealed at that point and the you would not normally want to eliminate Calypso because of new information, there's going to be a conflict in your head. Right. Yeah. But right now you're fine. You can kind of do whatever you want. Sure. Well, I mean, there's certainly new information, but I don't think I can act on it yet because I haven't seen them. So I guess I will make my exit. Um, the Duchess says, May all the ladies' luck be with you, and you will always be a champion of Cantamont. Uh, with that, uh, yeah, you, you return as you're walking toward the the exit of the Grand Hall. This is when you see Lode, Kaelin, and Sam coming down the stairs. You interact with each other. What would you like to say? And this is also out of sight of the of the Duchess. You're like, you, you had already turned the corner. Lode says, we fed hippogriffs by hand. <laughs> Hmm. Hippogriffs, you say? Yeah, he said they know you. Hmm. One moment, please. I'm going to turn back around and go in. Go back in. I have to a the, request. To the Duchess? <laughs> to the Duchess. I have a okay. request. You come back in, and she says, uh, Back so soon, Sunset? I have a small request. A little over a year ago, me and my companions brought two hippogriff hatchlings. If they are still around, they would greatly aid us in this uh, task. Perhaps you could see fit to let us borrow them? Give me a persuasion check. Sure. 
sure I'm looking at the right character sheet. Got plus eight. Wow, I didn't know it was that good. Oh, yeah, my my persuasion and my deception are both ridiculous. And yet you always answer every situation with fire. <laughs> but because I haven't had an occasion to really be diplomatic or deceptive. I can't help it if I always get attacked first. Uh, that's going to be 15. Yeah. The Duchess says, um, Ah, yes. The, uh, the adolescent hippogriffs that uh, guard the keep of Cantamont. And even, and she gives her a big sigh. She says, even though I wish uh, to give you all of the help you could... Um, you need the hippogriffs are one of our last lines of defense for me and the duke I cannot allow them to leave surely with me and my companions running around all eyes will be on us and not on the Great Keep. You say that with such disdain. But <laughs> I, I actually do. Uh, the Great Keep. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll finish it off with perhaps just one to speed our way. No, nope, you failed one uh, persuasion check already. I'm not going to give you a second chance. She is, she is not convinced. Worth a shot. I think you fail. Definitely. It's all right. I'll just steal him. We've done it before. <laughs> and they were happy with the results, so great. We will find you a new home you'll love. You guys clearly love Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. So you go back. Yeah. You go back to Sam, Load, and Kalen. Well, that was a bust. Um, let's go talk to those hippogriffs. <laughs> now, how long oh. has it been? You. Uh, it has been at least ten minutes. minutes. This is this is the giant keep. It's going to take you more than five minutes to go one way. Yeah. And you talk for a however long. <laughs> So as you, uh, all four of you head back to the roof, you exit the door and they're waiting. Kind of, you know, one's laying down and one's kind of, you know, milling about. When you come through the door, they all stand up. And they see sunset and they, um, they seem to, you know, more agitated, more they, they're little, can't keep themselves still kind of things. Well, so I would like to point out that there is no limit to the number of times you can cast those as rituals. I was, <laughs> I was just about to say, does anybody have anywhere to be in the next 10 minutes? <laughs> oh, real. <laughs> okay, it no, is It is getting to... into nighttime now. It, uh, it is dark up there. Um, I'm free all night. <laughs> it seems vision. like a safe place. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, with the exception of the demonic creature currently inhabiting the Duchess, but we'll get to that later. Um, Wait, what? Does <laughs> that say that out loud? Uh, hey, you said it. You said it in character. You said it out loud. Yeah, no, I, I was trying to decide because, like, I'm going to say it eventually. I just don't know if I'm going to say it right now. But no, I think it's I think it's appropriate. Uh, so should we like L later? Later. Okay. We're fine. Later. <laughs> okay. Hold. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, you go through the same process. You, uh, you commune with nature, commune with the mountains where the hippogriffs come from what? and where they're born. And um, while he's you know casting this as a ritual i want to uh, i want to just like kind of go over and like 
kind of reach out my hand in as non-threatening a way as possible just to kind of try to uh, pet them. Cool. Give, me, why not? Uh, give me an animal, hand, animal handling check. Whatever's, uh, what is... Do I get advantage because they know me and like me already a little bit? No, no. I think the advantage is gone now because they're the advantage was for them to go from aggressive to non-aggressive. Mm. So now it's normal. Now it's normal. Well, but they haven't interacted with me yet. All right, fine. <laughs> ah, shit. That's a five. <laughs> okay. Um, as you reach up uh, to pet the uh, the hippogriff. I'm, I'm... I'm doing it, uh, it slowly, and it, uh, and as you Mon accidentally get stuff. a little too close to its eye, which is kind of its protective spot, and it uh it lashes out and attacks you. What's your AC? Uh, oh, God. eighteen. God damn. <laughs> For now, <laughs> it hits. Uh, does it hit a twenty-three? No. Okay, then it bounces off my shield. It uh, reaches out and snaps at you, um, and then it, it backs up a little bit, but doesn't fly away or anything. Um, you complete your ritual load. Uh, you then start to hear what they're saying, um, and they're saying... Um, one is saying to the other... It's time to go back to the keep, to the to the citadel. We, it's time to sleep. And the other one is saying, no, no, no. We must stay and protect the Sylvan Elms. Oh, so it wants to protect the Sylvan Elms. No, not the keep. Let me uh, let me rephrase that. Uh, the other one says, I am. I want to see what the Sylvan Elves will do. All right, I start talking to that one specifically. Okay. You know, not ignoring the second one, but, you know, kind of directing my efforts at the more interested party. Um, actually, I convey that to the group and then kind of ask what we should do. I would suggest that the one who wishes to stay do so, while the one who wishes to see what we will do join us. Does anybody know a lullaby? Maybe we could just like put the sleepy one to sleep and then just like walk away. Uh, uh, no, no, this isn't... Right. This isn't my character that's proficient in singing. Sorry. Fair enough. Where's the okay, bard? We so need one. We, we haven't we haven't gotten to that part of the story arc yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I start talking to, uh, I guess the sleepy one actually that doesn't want to come with us, and say, you know, well, you know, you could return to the keep and we will stay here under the watchful eye of your companion. Okay, give me a persuasion check. Oh, god damn it. Not Why do I advantage. keep having to do this? I assumed. Crit. No shit! Wow. Uh, as you suggest this, Ooh. one of them... Uh says, I do not care, I must sleep. Be careful, brother. And he, and he, and he, f he takes off with a big gust of wind, you know, blowing wind to your face. Takes off and you see it kind of circle around the keep and then eventually it lands in the broken tower. Okay. Um, I guess now I say to the remaining one, um, you know, I know that you are very grateful to these Sylvan Elves for helping you earlier in your life. Um, would you like to come with us in the 
quest that the Duchess herself has charged us with and help us to help Cantamont. All right, final final perception roll, final persuasion roll you have to roll. If you make this, they will go with, he will go with you and be your companion. 16. 16? Hold on. The hippogriff agrees. Hey, hey. Uh, your, this hippogriff can now be your mount. Um, well, my my mount. <laughs> Trap the one who did all who the persuading. Who specifically? Uh, Load is the one that convinced him, so he's most eager to go with Load right now. Um, he and uh, he talks with you, and he he, he says. Um, the keep is a place of sadness. Uh, I wish to go with you. And hold on, hold on. Actually, let me check this first. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. He looks at Load and says, I wish to follow you. Okay. And he um. says, um, uh, just some, he can be a mount just to understand he can only carry probably two people on him and fly okay. two little people doors aren't um, little they're small in size but they're still dead so they're heavy so yeah, the only one who's a half a person people. is sam oh, yeah it's pretty weird. um <laughs> let me i just need to find the can't swat and hand this page. it's too big okay, you can't you can't you can't thieve the hippogriff. <laughs> so I don't even really want to ride it. Uh, I would say uh, before I lose my link with it, I ask it what its name is. There we go. I was waiting for that. He explains that his name is Moonclaw. And his brother, Moonclaw? Moon, as in the gotcha. glowing orb in the sky at night. And his brother, Sunclaw, uh, the two of them have been s s about eight months ago, uh, there was great turmoil in the city, and the, um, the zoological gardens at Kentamont were abandoned, and they were freed from their cages. Uh, There's a zoological garden? That's nice. <laughs> um, with that, they they flew to the mountains um, and realized that they still felt a connection with the city. When they came back, uh, the Duke and Duchess fed them and asked them to stay in the 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 destroyed citadel, and that that's what they've been doing since. Okay. Um, so are we still up on top of the keep? Yes. Whoa, my camera just went out. Oh, we just lost her. Yeah, yeah, hold on. I can fix that. So can I... Once again, I explained that I'm about to lose the ability to, uh, you know, communicate with him directly. Um, I mean... I ask him, how are we going to do this? Like hand signals or like... Uh, that's something you have to... Uh, you have to train. So it's not going to be okay. immediate. Uh, you're going right. to gonna be able to... When you don't when you don't have uh, speak with animals up, you'll still be able to train with him. It's going to be an animal handling check. At first, it's not going to be perfect, but after some, after some time, you will be able to do it easily. Okay. Yeah. Good to... Yeah. Definitely should be able to get advantage of that eventually. Because, yeah. like, at the end of the day, you're just like, all right, we're going to sync up out of one to one where we actually talk to each other. So, when I was doing this, I meant to do this, like, oh, okay, next time. You know, now now I understand what you're trying to convey, right? That yeah. should that should speed things up significantly, I would think. <laughs> yep, for sure. Um, okay, so before I lose our link, I ask him if he will ferry us down to the ground outside of the keep, like two at a time. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, two of you climb on his back. Let's. Who wants to go first? Retcon. Quick retcon. I jump on his back, and then one at a time, I fly the other members of the party down so that I can, you know, get, get a handle experience. on this yeah. and ride a hippogriff. Because why the hell not? Um. Yeah. Just this give me be all. All four of you. Give me an animal handling check. So, hold on. I just want to. I'm trying to check a couple things real quick. Um, this is medium. Uh, Kaelin rolls a 13. Or gets a 13. Because um, there are a couple of rules for mounting. I just want to make sure that. I'm not everything... planning to be mounted on this thing very often. Honestly, I haven't even looked at the mounting rules. I just. But we're, we're gonna I have free. pretty extensively. I just want to make sure that um, everything is okay. So essentially, the rules for mounting are: you can mount a creature that is one size, at least one size larger than you. Yeah. Um. So I just wanted to make sure that like something weird wasn't occurring, and like some of us were considered large, or that the hippogriffs weren't considered like medium. Um, mm -hmm. Sam's Which they are a, not. Sam's a little pudgy, but he's not large. Sam is small. The rest of us are medium, and the hippogriffs are large. large so hippogriffs. I just wanted to confirm that all of those are uh, aligned appropriately. Cool. All right. Um, uh, Kalen gave me the animal handling check. Everyone else do it, please. I got a 15. Yep. 16. I think we just need sunsets. I fall off. off. Yeah. No, I rolled a five. <laughs> Again. <laughs> it would have been you'd been better off if you rolled a one. Uh, I think it's sunset. hilarious that uh, there's one member possibly. of the party the hippogriff doesn't yeah, like. I rolled a four plus my <laughs> one animal handling. This is or just sunset. the hippogriff as, is nervous, as right? As you successfully <laughs> fly down with load to the the ground in front of the keep, but as you're as you're getting off, your foot gets caught in its feathers, and you kind of stumble face first off of the hippogriff in a very undignified manner and you take um four points of damage seriously, seriously. four points I, I rolled a d4 also and i, I rolled a four I, I... ready at less than half health you fall face first into the curb and chip a tooth And now, now I need to pick and up now when you so talk, there's a there's a slight whistle from the from the <laughs> space that you broke on your tooth. And your name is Sunset. <laughs> <laughs> It'll really be able to intimidate people now. <laughs> Priceless. <clears throat> All right, so the four of you are at the the main entrance to the keep, which is gated behind you. Um the hippogriff wants to come with you. It's not. It's not. As you start to walk, it follows you. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, claw, I just kind of want him to be my buddy more than my like mount. So, where do you want to go? Sunset's been complaining. Uh, do we need to go take a rest? We already did that. I'm good now. I mean, are you complaining about HP? Well, oh, well, I mean, yeah, but like. All right. Uh, well, I can. You've you've had a long rest, so I can patch you up. Right. right I can uh, do the healing thingy. So Just, it's uh, put a cap on that tooth and. <laughs> uh, so all the dice. In there so, yeah, and ten hit, make it work. Ten hit dice now. So fourteen plus D six. Is dentistry so a, uh, is there a dentistry check? I mean, no, I'm, uh, I'm joking. That'll be one T. I'm just looking got, at the category. You got, you got, I, yeah, I rolled a six. What? Oh, nice. So 20, but put you in much better shape now. What well, do you got now? 49 out of 62. Okay. All things considered. Still it's not bad. Not bad. You can still go about your day or night, whatever. 
So yep. not yeah, assault so it's, on it's the. Right about, it's right about the middle of the night now. All right. Perfect. And you guys are right um, here at the front of the keep. Regardless of the need for a rest or not, I'm going to suggest we go back to the inn anyway. Why? Because I do not want to confront Calypso at night. Oh, so you, you think this she, is a daytime thing? She I does have a nasty daytime. habit of just showing up places. This is true. But um, I... Uh, considering what I think is actually going on inside the keep. Um, yeah, I don't want anything to do with any of this at night. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, I'll... Okay. Yeah, I mean, we've been gone for a long time. Well, it's a couple more hours. Mm. <laughs> so. Yep. Uh, so. All right, we'll head over. Uh, we will show uh, what Moonclaw about the town and buying some snacks along the way. <laughs> so as you walk down the streets towards uh, towards the Unicorn's Bounty, um, people are really... There's only a few people on the street, and all of them look pretty downtrodden. And when they see you walking down the street with a, a giant <laughs> hippogriff, uh, the streets clear for you, basically. All right, That's sweet. Good. Cool. You are you are definitely attracting attention. Like no one, everyone knows you're in the city now at this point. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's that. probably something we don't really want, but it's too late now. Too late now. <laughs> everyone knows we're here. Yep. All right. Well. So much for stealth. Well, I guess we weren't playing on stealth. We were planning on going in the middle of the day. We are, well, we have a mandate from the ruler of the city. That seems to be our, you know. Well, I feel like all the people we don't want to know we're here already know we're here, probably. So. Yeah, well, and I have a sneaking suspicion that they're all the same person. Interesting. Okay. So there's, that means that attempting to be stealthy really is pointless. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll do it your way. We'll uh, take a look at the daytime. Actually, actually, a little bit of a parade might not go amiss because if we're flaunting the fact that we're back, maybe that will. I don't know. All right. Well. Uh, so, so back to the end. That's the plan. Yep. Back to the end. Okay, to the unicorn's bounty. All right, um, you arrive back at the unicorn's bounty. Uh, you are confronted at the front door by by Porky, who sees the hippogriff, sees Moonclaw, and gives a like a look of surprise and like worry, like. Mm, and he says, ah, we can maybe put him in the stables. Maybe. Um, and he finds the biggest stable he has, a place where uh, where Mooncaw can sleep. Okay. Uh, and Does no it need, seem no like need that's going to gonna happen? Moonclaw gets the, gets the idea that he's supposed to stay there, so don't worry. I guess he's probably used to a pen of some sort. Uh, and you go inside. Um, last time you were in the um, the Unicorn's Bounty, it was kind of sparsely inhabited because it was the daytime. Um, now there's a few people there, um, more than more than there were during the daytime, but not nearly as much as it used to be. Uh, the the Dread Elf Darius, the guy who was like your little fanboy, is there also. And sitting on top of the actual bar 
is a, a figure that as you approach, he yells out and he says, Oi! Sam! I've been waiting for you! And, um... Sitting on the bar is a halfling with the same hair color as Sam. And Sam, you recognize this halfling to be um, your brother, Seymour Sandwich. Oh, I thought no. it was going to be Ham. <laughs> you know what? That's, that, that might be better. Ham. Ham Sandwich. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> It, 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 they had those parents that the, the names had to rhyme. And Sam they'd already and ham. picked out ham. Sam and ham. So um, Sam will work for the second one. Yeah. So this is this exactly. is where this is where the movie flashback happens. The um Sam, you and, and Ham joined the uh the Raven the Order of the Crows uh in Cantamont join them at a young age to seek out your riches and fame. Uh, you, Sam, became involved in the pit fighting. You became a pit fighter, and and Ham became a, a bookie, basically. Ham. Good old Ham. Um, but later on, your, uh, your level of drinking increased while Ham's level of drinking decreased and actually got to a point where he became straight edge, didn't do any drinking. And you, Sam, you continue to drink heavily and it, it was an influence in your life. And eventually, um, as the things you were doing for the Order of the Crow became more and more dangerous, Ham decided to leave. And this was about, including the 11 and a half months that you were in the time warp, uh, a year and a half ago. And it has, uh, it has is torn at your heart, Sam. You have missed your brother. You feel that you are responsible for Ham leaving out of your actions of drinking. But tonight, in the, uh, the place you least expected to see him, in this, in the Unicorn's Bounty, in this city of, that's basically in lockdown in like, in like, uh, what's the, what's the right word? Like, um, nationalistic control, like, no one goes out, Martial no one law. goes in. You see your brother sitting at the bar, hand on hip. He says, Sam, it's been too long, you drunk piece of shit. He resembles that remark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see you haven't lost your charm. How's your 12 children doing? <laughs> They're good. They're good. Um... But don't worry about my children. Their mothers are taking just good care, plenty of good care of them. I'm here because I need your help, Sam. Again? Who do you owe money to this time? Oh, I own. I owe a few people some money, but I'm here upon my own accord. I'm here. I'm here to save the city of Cantamont. You too? I need you to come back with me and talk to Calypso. Because she is trying to save the city. Oh, good. So much saving. Gosh. As you're, having, so as, you're having, as you're having this discussion, um, Porky instinctually places a full beer next to you. And Cam goes into the story. 
of how the entire time he had settled down in a in a small a, the in the the suburb quote unquote of Greenfields, which is to the right of to the east of Cantabont, when he left the uh, Order of the Crow. And it settled down become to become a, a simple farmer. But uh, about a year ago, uh, the city, all of a sudden, the duke sealed the city, refused any trade in and out, and the people started to starve inside. And he eventually was able to, to uh, infiltrate the city with the help of Cloud. And he has been in the city being a resistance fighter for six months now. And he has ears all over the city. And when he heard of a group of four people traveling with a hippogriff, one of which was a halfling that couldn't stop drinking, he knew it was you. And he knew that the four of you were the only hope of defeating the duke. Hmm. And as well, and as, as, as he, and he when the beer got set down next to you, he looks at it and gives it a scowl, like a. So him, what happens after you save the city? Then what? I can go back to my life of farming, go back to being a provider of food to the city of Cantamon. There's a lot of other cities in this land. If I even stay here at all. It's a good question, my good brother Sam. I've come to I've come to find a soft place in my heart for this city of Cantamont. Even though I am no Equitanian, they accept me for my my humble stature. And they accept me for my uh my craft with the uh, with the planting seed. Hmm. So when's the last time you talked to your good buddy uh, Claw? Ah, uh, we're in brother's arms. <laughs> pretty, we're in pretty constant communication. We have the resistance has many. Many spies, ears and eyes throughout the city. And we are easily able to communicate over the wall. And what about Calypso? Ah, uh, Calypso. She's been here since the beginning. She filled the void that the Door sisters created when they left. She has been the one that has maintained any sort of life in the city while um, being able to smuggle in the meager amounts of food and resources that have kept the people within the city alive. Wow. Sounds like a very kind-hearted, honest, helpful person, Ham. I believe sure so. Much. She she says she needs to talk with you, and she sent me. Your brother, Does she? ham sandwich. Hmm. You're dressed pretty well, ham, for a farmer. Um. Do you like do you like what do you want to do an insight check or anything like that? Sure. Uh, eighteen. Uh, let's see here. Uh, he does seem to be dressed pretty well. Does, uh, not like the other people in the city, which are in, you know, probably clothes they haven't, they've been wearing for a year. Um, he seems genuine. But you are... 
you have a mixture of distrust for him and also a lot of guilt when it comes to your brother. You think he uh, he tries to control you, yet you feel guilt that you uh, you caused him to leave the the order of the crow. He left because well, of the far. Well, this is a big request, and I know we're brothers, but I've got a new family now. Me, myself, and I. <laughs> oh, the lone wolf. I like it. I like it. Oh, okay. Um, as you say this, you're the, the me, myself, and I is is your new family. You see him stop and look at you with um, big, welling puppy dog eyes, and you see one single tear form at the edge of his eye and tumble down his face. And he says, Sam, I'm sad to hear that. I wish you would help us against the uh, the dictatorship that is the Duke and Duchess. Mm. Well, the invitation, thing, Sam, you know. the invitation's always open. Come to the old house door, but it seems I do not have the power to convince you to come. Oh. Could you say uh, easy way in? We have now two easy way ins. Because we still got our, our fan club up in the uh, stage. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. If you uh, are the fan, uh, they will know exactly who is the fan. There's going to be no surprise, but at least we maybe get through some of the BS at the door. Yep. Or just fly over. That's a way, a way to make an entrance. Well, two of you could fly, and two of us could teleport. That works. Get a... Maybe maybe we, uh, we can rack up a, a higher kill chain this time. Like everyone gather around. I have something really important to say. Ba Boom! <laughs> <laughs> You're all dead. <laughs> Good stuff. Start poisoning pigeons in the park. Just you know, throw all the seeds. Just in the park. <laughs> Might as well Sam, be what how you doing about this? Cloud of feathers. Seems good to me. And with that ham sandwich, uh, takes a coin out of his pocket and slaps it on the count bar top in front of you, Sam. And he gets up and he kind of stretches his back and then walks out the door. That coin that he slapped down in front of you is another coin of the crow with the crow emblazoned on one side. Oh, this is just coming out people's ears. It's uh, yep. not quite as precious as it used to be. <laughs> well, I, I think we Kaylin, now have three. Kaylin, you are blurry as all heck. Yep. Yeah. I tried to all stop the and start. The hand thing doesn't work. Uh. I tried it already. So I'm just gonna... This might throw me off a bit. Oh, let's start. Through sunset. Oh. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay. Threw me off. All right. All right. So ham sandwich leaves the building. Lots of emotion there. Lots of uh, bad blood. Lots of drinking. Very tense. Yeah. Possibly too much drinking. Possibly not enough drinking. Who knows? Mm. What do you guys want to do? Well, now that this 
emotional roller coaster has come to an end. Um, I'm going to suggest that we uh, <laughs> adjourn to our room. I'm going to sleep in the stable with the crypt. Yeah. Oh, I'm, man, going to su- good man. I'm going to suggest you guys at least join us in the room for a little bit. What? They, uh, they they may need to they, they may want to hear what I have to say. I'm briefing in the morning. <laughs> or well, we'll tell well, one of them can come up once they with the Kevin Griffin, then the other can second one can go down and tell the other while they cuddle and spoon so each other to sleep. On persuasion. <laughs> I am rolling like garbage today. Oh, it's good. It's nothing important. <laughs> I, I animal would handling that. check. So you 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 can you can go sleep with the Griffin after I've said my piece. Just yeah, I will. Like like ten minutes tops. All good. Tw- Twenty minutes. All right. All right, so you all, uh, you all head up to the room which you have purchased from uh, Porky. Uh, and coincidentally, it's the same room you stayed in before, but for some reason, it just seemed a little bit different, a little more, a little more grime on the tables, a little more, a little wear and tear on the furniture, but it's the same room. Check the floorboards just to I'm gonna, be Yeah, I'm gonna check all the hiding spots just to just to be okay. sure. So that See was what's the left you would get? That was the hiding space behind the painting and the two spots beneath the floorboards. Yes. Uh hold on. <laughs> yeah, they're they're all empty. All you find is cobwebs. Yep, thank you, Calypso. <laughs> Taking our life savings. Yep. Reasonable. Okay. Is there another note that says, I still have your money, Sunset? <laughs> <laughs> Just to that, piss you off. That would be great. Yep. Yep. Anyway, so I'll reiterate everything that happened uh, in the keep, uh, including the fact that the Duchess was wearing the amulet that we gave to Calypso, as well as the uh, dramatic voice change that occurred which mm-hmm. I believe I already mentioned once, but my theory is that the uh, Duchess is no longer the Duchess, but is in fact um, uh, Sophia, yep. uh, the final door sister, who we will need to eliminate. I'm not entirely sure how she got a hold of the amulet we gave to Calypso, um, but uh, it's possible that they're one in the same person, or that perhaps uh, the Calypso that is currently uh, masquerading in the old door household is somehow body doubled and is actually the Duchess. Who knows? There's a lot of theories I, I, I they, they could sprout from this, but um, how, how does it change the plan for tomorrow? Um, it doesn't. Okay. You know, so we, are we planning to go see Calypso tomorrow? Yes, uh, okay. that would be just good. Double check. And we're gonna say hi and then just like stab her one like just like sucker punch. <laughs> that that's the plan. I mean, it's not a bad plan. Okay, we'll see how we'll see how close we can get yeah. before uh, we uh, unleash hell. I mean, how? I guess I won't really know until I come face to face with Calypso. But how? How uh, aggressive is this compulsion? Like, am I going to attack her on sight, or? I guess you'll have to roll the. I mean, I, I ima- yeah, I imagine that it, it'll it'll have to be, like it'll it'll have to occur. We're gonna have to hold you back. Hey, 
and, yeah, and you have legit reasons, not just under like compulsion. It's like, bitch took my money. Fucking... Yeah, this is true. <laughs> it's true. So, um, doesn't you don't have to think too much of it. So, uh, gotta refocus. But um, I mean, and it's not like holding me back is gonna do much. Right. I only have like two spells that are, you know, melee range or only within fifteen feet. Everything else can hit from quite a ways away. Mm -hmm. Plus, I'm significantly faster than all of you for at least two turns. And I can teleport. So. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, good, good luck you... holding me back, is, is all I'm saying. All right, Lord and Sam, why don't you uh, go uh, take care of uh, Moonclaw there, and we'll uh, see you uh, first thing in the morning. Nighty night. All right, uh, yeah. you, you spend the evening in the stables with Moonclaw. Go ahead and give me both Sam and Loda animal handling check. Oh, God. Gonna be that's like gonna <laughs> sleep eating. Oh, just what, what if I crit fail? The night. <laughs> Nothing's gonna happen if you crit fail. Just... All right, well, that's what I did. So, so, what, so what's although, the point of rolling? Sam <laughs> Sam could let you uh, re-roll it. No, no. I want to well, find out I mean, what happens. Lucky, lucky roll. You, you no. guys don't you guys waste are... it more on RP stuff. Well, I mean, well, the, the thing gonna is, sleep. we're gonna sleep. Yeah, it's not wasting it because he's just gonna gain him back. Well, right. he said nothing bad would happen. So now I want to find out what does happen if I crit fail. So mm. but really bad. Nothing. It just takes a little longer for you to gain rapport. Is my understanding. All right. Too late, luck has already passed. Sam, anal handling check, what'd you roll? A nine. <laughs> you both mauled the death. <laughs> you both die a horrible <laughs> death in your sleep. Um, yeah, they find us the next morning. Griffin food. I don't think we would. I imagine Not Griffin... you, but like Porky or whatever finds us. No, the no, next no, morning. I don't imagine anybody would. They might yeah, find some, some pellets. No, uh, what, hap yeah. what happens is you both enter and um, lay down to go to sleep, and the griffin somehow snuggles up against Sam and doesn't snuggle up against you. Um, A little jealous. That's, uh, <laughs> Sam, it's like Terrible it feels good jealous. to be loved. You've been alone for a lot of your life, but... Uh, also, this is a giant monster, and you are a tiny halfling, so it's a little, little oppressive. But you're, you're you feel good. Load it hurts it hurts your heart a little bit. Seriously, <laughs> I can relate. So you wake up the next day. Whoa! All what right. do you want to do? What do you want to do? Tell me what you want to do. Uh, so we. Full on long rest. Full on long rest. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Let's head on over to the door house. Yep. We'll make a. Let's, let's grab our our fan club first. He's probably asleep, but we can wait. Oh, we're grabbing the. Oh, oh we're using the alpha to uh, do yeah. the entrance. Oh, yeah. Okay. Why why make it more difficult? Mm. Yeah, let's do it. Makes oh, sense. You're, you're grabbing the hippogriff. No, the Dredo. No, the Dredo. Oh, the Dredo. You're club. taking the Dredo. Interesting. Darius. Yeah. Darius. Yeah. A yeah. fan club. Um. So you wake up in the morning and um, sitting on his quasi throne in the um, on the stage in the Unicorn's Bounty is um, a sleeping Darius. He is. He's got a half drunk mug of ale in his lap and he's been asleep snoring away no one else is in the no one else is in the inn except for of course porky behind the bar because he's always there uh what you want to do so before we leave i ask if there are any doors as they remember between the entrance and like whatever throne room in the door house 
that uh, are too small for a hippogriff. If you guys remember that the main door to the main room were like the the room where um, they were entertaining guests. The audience chamber. The audience, that's the right word, audience chamber. That door is big enough for the hippogriff to go through. None of the other doors are. Okay, so we can get to like the throne room, quote unquote, from the entrance Mm -hmm. with Moonclaw. The audience chamber, yes. Okay. Um, well, I asked the party, should we bring the hippogriff? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's what I thought, too. Just making sure. Uh, okay. At the very least, can, like, block one entrance. I go to the yep. stables, get Moonclaw, and wait outside the front door. Okay. Who wants him. to wake up? some of my breakfast. Who, who wants to wake up Darius? No, oh, I mean, all right. I'll, I'll wake up Darius with like a knife to his throat. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, so hold there on. There we go. Okay. So hold on. If, if, if yeah, that's no, what no, you're... No, no, no. Caitlin no, no. did it. This is I happening. This is happening. Late. No, 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 no. This Set is a conversation. I asked who <laughs> was going to do it. Caitlin said that she would do that. I wasn't finished with the conversation. No actions have occurred. Hmm. Caitlin, did you want to say that or did you want to do that? That was the uh, suggestion. And uh, yes, it is part of a conversation. Okay. There's a like, wake him up with a knife to throw? Like, does that seem like a good idea to you? Or No, that's probably not a good idea. Um, (laughs) If that's your suggestion, I'm going to go with what I want to do. Does a bucket of water weigh more than 10 pounds? What's the weight of a gallon of water? A bucket of water. Does it weigh more than 10 pounds? Uh, A gallon is 3.8 liters, that's one kilo per liter, so uh, what? And 2.2 pounds, so 2.2 pounds, 3.8. Sounds like Uh, it. Plus the weight of the bucket. How many gallons are in a bucket? What, three bucket? Three gallons? Yeah, so it's barely less than 10, 10 pounds. All right, that's all I needed to know. Um, I'm going to ask Porky for a bucket of water. Uh, Porky says, Aye, yes, I've, I've... it's not really water. It's the swill <laughs> from the bar last night. And, the, and you see the, tr- do the trough just... at the back of the bar where all the half-spilt drinks and the spit and the cigarette butts and the, the chew oh. spit and all that and it's there, and it all the trough leads down to the end of the bar where it falls into a bucket even better even better i cast mage hand pick up the bucket and then proceed to dump it over darius from 30 feet away God. to wake him up all right you dump the bucket uh Darius screams out of shock and discomfort after being rudely awakened. Um, and he looks looks around in confusion and sets his eye directly at sunset. And I say, let's go see Calypso. Darius jumps up and he says, Go see Calypso. Go see Calypso. Fuck you. You just drenched <laughs> me. We tried waking you up by, you know, calling your name and you were asleep. I needed to. And let's see here. Um, give me a persuasion check. You just told a lie to him. Uh, I believe that would be a deception Deception. check. Deception, sorry. Uh, What is that, 14? Fourteen. 14, that's just enough. 
He's like, oh, I guess the, uh, you guys are uh, heroes. And he's wiping, wiping off his head and his shoulders. And he's like, ah, oh, well, I guess it was my fault. I didn't wake up. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's go. <laughs> and he walks yeah. out the front door to run directly into the hindquarters of <laughs> Moonclaw. And he's like, What is this animal? What? A hippogriff? I say, Hey, man, you got sludge on my hippogriff. <laughs> what gives? Oh, you don't want to do that. Uh, give Bad me, give news, me an intimidation check. Sunset. Okay. Oh, oh, sunset's sunset. not... No, no, not no. Oh, load. Yeah, I would say load. But, I'm yeah. assisting load in this... Oh. All right, load, load. Give me, give, <laughs> what'd you roll? Eight. The, the, <laughs> the assist he, counter he, more, in you, he looks at the He looks at the hippogriff's butt and he says, yeah, whatever. And he starts walking out the door towards um, the uh, the house door neighborhood from before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really want to ride the hippogriff all the way there. Like, not fly, just ride. Yeah. No. That'd be cool. I just. No. I think Nobody he, I rides think... the hippogriff unless we need to. He is my friend. Not our slave. Only a slave he thinks he is. Oh, I... the, the feels, the feels, okay. Um, That's no, no slave. I mean... Yeah. Or servant, anyway. or whatever you want to call it. I'm, I'm tempted to just roll the animal handling check and fall on my face again. <laughs> <laughs> Considering that every animal handling check I've rolled in this campaign so far, I, I think, no, really? no, the very first animal handling check against the mother, I think I, oh, yeah. I, I crit succeeded on, <laughs> and then we murdered it. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, um, let's not stir up any memories here. I wasn't there for that. No, you weren't. Yeah, Don't blame me. Not <laughs> looking directly at the viewer at home, saying, "Don't blame right. me for that." We keep on following Darius as he's walking away yeah, towards right. the door. <laughs> but we'll just keep following. All right. So you follow Darius. Uh, you find yourself back to the center um, courtyard. Um. And you look up and see the statues of yourselves again, how, how ridiculous they are. Uh, and they, they look, with this, the, the, the morning sun, they look a little uh, different, a little more sinister than they looked previously. Kind of a mockery of yourselves. And as you continue past the central courtyard into the, the, the door district, um, you notice a noticeable shift in uh, how well the people are doing in this district. Last time you were here, this was a, a district of opulence and riches. Now it is the exact opposite. There's everyone who occupies this area is downtrodden and poor and on the st sitting on the streets and people sleeping on the streets and a real state of um, despair in this neighborhood. Um, Is it pretty much on par with the rest of the city that we've seen? It's worse. Or is it worse? Okay. Worse. Interesting. Mm. So definitely not gaining any points uh, in that regard. So. Yeah. Uh, as you approach the Dewar house, you enter the, the small courtyard in front of the Dewar house, and Kaelin, as you saw it before, it looked like it was under construction. Uh-huh. 
But as you're looking at it close now, it's much more, um... slapstick construction. It's not done well. It's literally pieces of the build, the surrounding buildings that have been taken to make this building somewhere close to whole. Uh, it doesn't, <clears throat> for you, it doesn't even look like this building is keeping the rain off of anyone inside. Are the uh, abomination. It's just dire circumstances on the the stone foundation and the stone walls you can still see the the scorch marks from the fire and the riot that um, that occurred here mm. um, and as you enter well you will you uh, you follow Darius to the front door and dare the the front doors one door is missing completely and the other door looks like it was taken from a another place where it was the door was a different size than the opening for this door. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't quite close all the way and it's kind of halfway swung open. He quickly just walks inside. Do you, uh, just want to give you the opportunity if you want to not go inside or whatever. Oh, we, we I, I think we go inside, yeah. <laughs> we, we came here to come inside? We are going inside. I'm following but, uh, you guys at this point. Well, so. warily, warily going inside, uh, expecting an ambush. <laughs> As you walk inside, um, the previously there was like this, the 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 da dais where the four sisters sat upon and took um, audience is that that is still there and since it was such a like wood timber construction really thick wood it maintained its structure and like but it's still scorched on the outside sitting behind that in the center is calypso looks like she's looking down at paperwork she's writing something Next to her is um, lazily looking out the front door at you is a Ham Sandwich. And previously you, in this, the, the main area of this room, it was like a line, like you literally like a line at like, um, to get into, into a movie theater or something with the red ropes, like the red velvet ropes, or like you have, you have to go back and forth like a snake. Because uh, that is all gone. And now in this space are rows and rows and rows of cots. And laying on these cots are numerous um, people from the city. All of them look to be injured or sick. And this is basically uh, a makeshift hospital. So are they receiving, like actively receiving medical attention from someone? Yes, there are people going around helping them, giving them food and water. Uh, but you really don't see any magical healing going on. This is just doing the best they can. And there's no, like, physicians either. But they do appear to be actually caring for them. Yes. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, as I, you, I could help out here. <laughs> as you enter, Calypso raises her head and notices you arriving. And as you arrive, she stands up. She takes off her large or, or big brimmed hat with the feather sticking about another half her height above her she takes it off and waves it at you and says welcome to house calypso adventures of old the the heroes of cantamont have returned i salute you and welcome you to my home things have changed since the last time you've been here and I am so very pleased to see you arrive. I think at this point, 
load steps forward and says, are you even happy to see me? Things have definitely changed since the last time you, you and I saw each other. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. This is great stuff. This is good stuff. Uh, I'd also like to ask, um, Hold on, is me, there give me a second, sort give me a second, give me a second, okay. I just want to see. Calypso looks down at Load, and she has a face of confusion, and she says, Hello, friend, have we, um, have we met before? And then Sunset, what would you want It's cold. Uh, <laughs> am I, uh, am I at all compelled to attack? Uh, you definitely are. Huh. Damn it. Okay. Uh, so this this will be interesting. How to go about doing this? Okay, and there's no, like, I can't make, like, another uh, save against this, can I? Based on the information overheard between Sam and Ham and the clear um, um, pseudo-medical you... facilities that are... <laughs> you can take uh, a... A constitution saving throw. What? Okay. To, to restrain yourself. Okay. Uh, that's going to be 18. Okay. You, nice. As you enter and you see uh, Calypso, you can feel yourself calling up the magic inside of you and you let you you see your hand curling up in front of you, and even a little fireball starts to like form oh, well, up inside of your hand. Well, that wasn't going to be the spell hand. I was going to cast, but that's um, yeah. just just a, I, a fire's glow appears in your hand. But you you take your other hand, you grab your wrist, and you're like, mm. and you bring it back. Uh, I need Dr. Sam, Strangler. Kalen, and Load to take a perception check. Uh, sure. Crit success, 24. 16. I see everything. <laughs> you're, 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 you're like, uh, Patrick Stewart in extras. Sam, what did you roll? You've seen everything. Good <laughs> age. Okay. Sam, you don't notice this. Load, you recognize something's wrong with Sunset. Kalen... You see this, and you instantly understand what is going on in Sunset's mind. You see the toil on her face, the struggle, her inner internal struggle is familiar to you, and you, uh, after traveling with her with X number, of, X number of years, you know exactly what this face means. You know that some outside magical force is trying to make her do something bad. Mm -hmm. So, to go up to Sunset and look her in the eye and it's like, uh, you're right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, perfect. You look, you look a little, <laughs> a little tired, <laughs> perhaps. Hot under the collar. <laughs> Uh, as I'm, you know, gra grabbing my my wrist uh, mm -hmm. of my other hand, uh, and kind of through clenched teeth, I'll say, "Does it look like I'm okay?" <laughs> um, we're not gonna go into like full combat initiative order here, but every 
time period that sunset that you guys do something, sunset's gonna have to take another test. She's on she's on the verge of oh. exploding literally and figuratively. What do you guys want to do? This is the mission to kill Calypso, so like why are we holding back? That's a question for you guys. I don't know. N new information? Because it um, might be a trick. So, okay. Uh, uh, can I... Can I... Um, th this is true. Innocent people, too. So, whatever. Um, can I... Do an insight check on... The interaction between Calypso and Lode. Specifically, the... You know, does it appear that she's trying to deceive us by saying that she's she has no idea who Lode is? Yeah, uh, go ahead and take that. Get a disadvantage too. You're struggling right now, so disadvantage. All right. That would be a twelve. That's a seven. A so seven. seven. Yeah. Uh, you can't tell because right? you. Um, I'm a little preoccupied. You're preoccupied. <laughs> you know, you, you know, Calypso has always been deceptive, and you can't tell if she seems sincere, but you don't trust it. That's reasonable. Sam or Kaylin, do you have anything you want to try before I start yelling at this lady again? <laughs> no. I mean, yeah, like I, I kind of want to. I, I, I kind of want to see where that goes. I'm very intrigued by, by that. I would figure there, would, there, there would have at least been some sort of recognition on her face. Granted, I was unable to discern if there was so there may have been there may not but all right sam kaylin what do you want to do everything ends the same way might as well get there <laughs> does, does sam throw the first punch <laughs> surprise round Still Whatever. walk around yeah, the back. We need to do before the stabbing, I guess. Kaylin, your last opportunity. What do you want to do? Oh, uh, getting closer to uh, Calypso. All right, and load. What do you want to do? Um, I guess one time before I start attacking. Uh. I guess I will pull out my two axes and just start kind of walking towards her and saying, are you sure you don't remember me? And then I will roll insight. <laughs> no, give me an intimidation first. Oh, okay. Uh, insight was 13, but intimidation will be... Come on! A 19. 19. Yes! <laughs> Nineteen. So, as you take out your weapons and and start walking toward uh, Calypso, she uh, she stands up. She realizes you are a threat to her, and she says, and then hold on. Oh Jesus! She says, uh, uh. Dwarf, I do not, I do not know who you are. I, I, I am sorry if I have wronged you. I have lived a life of excess and misdeeds, but I have, I have changed my life. The Order of the Crow was always based upon taking from the rich and keeping it for ourselves. It is now changed to saving the city. The Order of the Crow is here to help Cant uh, Cantamont and um, 
I hope you can forgive me for whatever I have done to you. Mm. Oh, let's go. Alright, uh, Sunset, give me another constitution saving throw. Yeah, I look back at the party over my shoulder just to kind of confirm that, are we doing this? Uh, we have not have, have the time to heal, so it's still pretty raw for us. So, oh. Sunset, you <laughs> successfully restrained yourself. Okay. Um, I would like to use this time to ask how the Duchess got the amulet that we provided. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Calypso looks back at Sunset and she says, yes, yes, I know. I was the one who gave the Duchess the amulet. She was the one who hired me to get it in the first place. Little, little did I know she would use it to turn Cantamont into what it is today. I regret giving Things her the Things are all coming together. Things are all coming together. I would like to point out that I do have that um, Scarab amulet. I don't know if that uh, offers any thing. We never did determine what that does, but I do have it. It, it keeps uh, someone alive. Well, if you <laughs> let them hold them on them to them it. it. And if they're French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah like, it, it keeps them alive unless they're French and being attacked by uh, friendlies. <laughs> uh, she tells you that story. She tells you the story of how he, she thought she was going to get a big payday out of it. She thought she could um, grow her influence in the city and then take over where the doors had left the silk trade in Cantamont. She thought she was be going to become the next door sisters. Um, uh, but that all changed when the Duke closed, sealed all the gates, sealed all of the trade, and um, basically marooned so, Cantamont. So you didn't change at all, just the circumstances stopped you. You greedy piece of crap. <laughs> she says, um, yes, that could be, that 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 certainly is true, but you have to, people can change. And the, the result of my action to this city have, has caused me to rethink my, my, cho my choices. Uh, so, quick, quick question. Yeah. I mean, I recognize that I'm under some sort of compulsion, right? That yes. it, this isn't okay. Do I think that? I mean, so. I, obviously being being versed in the magical arts um do i think that taking damage well no because i would have had to roll when i took the four points of damage what? in any case do i think taking damage might uh snap me out of it that's a common occurrence with charm effects if you're if you sustain damage you Get to uh, you, either the, the effect the knowledge of or charm the... spells that you have, you know that is something that can change the charm. So you think that might help you. Um, so whoever's near as me, you're, as me. you're struggling with your wrist again, um, Calypso finally turns and notices this. She says, she says, you, you are under her spell. That amulet the amulet that I gave to uh, the duchess is 
is what is compelling you now and is what what has caused the pain to this city no shit join me join me join me and we will take back the amulet and then and only then will the duchess be able to be defeated can we just defeat both of you she stops she says if that's what it if if that's the road you wish to take to the ground Kaylin, do you want to do anything? Um. Yeah, oh. Slap Summer. Sounds good. Slap that. All right. Uh, roll an attack roll. Oh. Well, shit. That's like, I'm not going to be able to do any damage. <laughs> All right. I think gotcha. it's reasonable for the purposes of this that it's it's the connection that occurs. It's not the amount of damage. Oh, well, I rolled a nine. Oh, yeah, that's not going to... I mean, if I'm not trying to, like, no, it, get um, away from it... It definitely <laughs> hits you. It's He strikes you. I'm sorry, she, she. strikes you. Um, it causes no damage. It jolts your system a little bit. Give me a... Um, What's the right save here? Hold on one second. Perhaps Wait, a charisma a save? I might just perhaps, need to stab you. I mean, perhaps, perhaps a charisma save? I would also accept uh, dex or con. Wisdom saving throw. Wisdom saving throw. Ah. All right. Uh, and since this is uh, against charm, do I get my advantage from the racial trait? Yes. All right. Beautiful. Well, that's an 11. That's probably not going to cut it. And that's a 6. So, 11. The oh. uh, You try to resist the charm again, but again, it, um... It persists. And Do I recognize that... that that helped, at least? <laughs> uh... You don't know for sure. Okay. You... But go ahead and do your constitution saving throw again. Oh, well. Congratulations, Calypso, you're getting slowed. Unless Sam wants to give me his lucky, I rolled the nat one. <laughs> oh, Sam. Yeah, luck away. All right. <laughs> you're still getting slowed. Uh, that's a 10. All right, so you... That's a 10. That's a 10. It was a five plus five for my con save. So you, you still hang on, but you are barely okay. hanging on. Barely. All, all right. All, all right. right, Sam, Kalen, and Lode, what do you want to do? Well, I mean, are we still team Scorched Earth or we want to actually be di diplomatic? I'm trying to be diplomatic here, but it's not working. I mean, I don't believe her. She locked load in a room to die. I don't believe that was her. But if it wasn't her, then if it wasn't the person we're talking to right now that locked me in the room, then the person we're talking to is impersonating her. And no, I believe probably... the person who locked you in the room was impersonating her. I believe the person who locked you in the room is the same person who is now impersonating the Duchess, who has probably been impersonating the Duchess for some time now, who is the final door sister, Sophia. Okay. So you're maintaining that this is actually Calypso. Yes, that is my opinion at this point in time with the information that and, I and have. The, and the real Calypso has not actually done the group harm like stealing all our money and like leaving us well to die. and the so i would argue that no so 
the one the calypso that we met the one we gave the amulet to that was this one that was confirmed by the fact that she knew what i was talking about when i said how did the duchess get the amulet that we provided who stole our money is up in the air it may have been this calypso it may have been a different calypso who the hell knows the point being I don't think that she's lying about not knowing who Load is, which means that the real Calypso was not the one who locked Load in the yeah. cellar. Which is why I haven't hit her yet. So <laughs> I don't know. All right. Well, I think I I think you know, I need to work a little bit harder to uh, knock it out of. Uh, of sunset, so uh, we can do a full, full sword swing. I'll, I'll patch you up later. We're in a hospital. We're a better place to do this. Straight. <laughs> I mean, all right. I'm not gonna stop you. I'm not gonna dodge either. <laughs> all right. Oh. Well, I'm gonna that's... stand there and take it. First attack is a ten. So that doesn't that, get past AC. That wouldn't get past my AC, but you do have to remember. Like an that attack is a 16. Also does not get past my AC. <laughs> Jesus. Third attack it is an 11. That doesn't get past my AC. I'm, tr I'm doing a, I'm trying to now, scare, intimidate as, you. As, as, as you, as you, as you, as you swing <laughs> at, as you swing at sunset, Right at the instant of, of full commitment, you 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 can't bring yourself to hurt your friend, and you intentionally miss her. Aw. Can I purposefully try to lean into it? Can I make a <laughs> dex save or something to like lean into it, regardless of what? Nope. 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 Uh, Sam, right. load. What do you want to do? Sam and load. So this is just like the element of of pain will bring her around basically i think it's just the amount the 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 it, deal damage it's the, well it it's not necessarily the it's not the damage i think it's the successful attack roll it's, can i it's just take hit. a candle and like hold it under your hand and like burn your finger just do an unarmed strike sure you can do that all right oh, i yeah. put my 20 candles and hold it under <laughs> Clipso's hand Lips I'm sorry, under sunset <laughs> Okay. Man, this would be surprised. You automatically take one damage uh, uh, and give me on, a wisdom cause... saving throw. Yeah, no, I'll just take it. I could reduce the damage because it's fire damage. <laughs> just make the damn save. <laughs> okay, that's a 16, and then let's see if I get higher. And that's a 10, so 16. You continue to want to kill Calypso. Take another constitution saving throw. Uh, that's going to be a 21 to the con save. You're, it hasn't gone away, but you are still restraining yourself. At this point... So... I'm going to I'm going to say to Calypso like if you have a way to undo this do so now because it's everybody here is on thin ice. <laughs> I'm saying this to Calypso. Uh it was one damage you said? One damage, yeah. With that um Calypso says I'll do what I can. And she raises her hand, she snaps her fingers. And with that, uh, you know, like, uh, Doctor Strange, like her spectral floor form comes out of her body, body. And she floats, like, with great speed directly at you, Sunset, and flies through you. Oh, fun. Do I need to make some sort of save for that? <laughs> Psychic damage, maybe. Do I gain okay, a take keen five, insight? You take into... five psychic damage and give me another wisdom saving throw. 
You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna dual roll this big and small uh, d20. Okay, there we go. That's a twenty, a dirty twenty, but it's a twenty. As right. as she flies through you, you can feel like her consciousness pass through your brain. You you sense her thoughts, which are very conflicted. There's anger and sadness. There's greed and selflessness all in one in her thoughts. But as she passes through you, it, you feel something break in the back of your mind and you're free of your rage. Ah, good. Very, and then as, uh, as the, the spectral form flies back comes back into uh, Calypso's body she takes a deep breath and says yes there I've broken her bond over you now now will you join me and save this city we need we cannot do it without you yeah, can you can you can <laughs> all four of you can all four of you forgive the 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 horrendous things I've done to you in the past to to come together come together and fight the Duchess for the sake of the city. We're murder hobos. We don't care if the city burns. Yeah, hold on, hold on. I have an an I have an answer to this. I have an answer to this. I just need to I just need to look at what I wrote down. Um Um 1,000 gold pieces. Ooh, um, do you just say 1,000 gold pieces? Just demand. Well, so for your information, that's the exact amount that was stolen from us at the beginning of the campaign. <laughs> Apparently by Calypso. She should know what I'm talking about. did complete the mission of getting the amulet, so. Up front. <laughs> um, she looks at you and she gives you a little wink and a nod. And she says, the money I stole from you, Sunset, is gone. It's in the bellies and in the food of the people here in this room. Uh, and I want you to give me an insight check. And we shall have our pound of flesh. <laughs> well, no, I'm uh, uh, honestly, I'm just going to ask for interest. but we'll see where the insight check leads. You have let me down. Going with the small with the one. Tra traitor dice? Yeah. Well, so it was the, the small d20 that I used that rolled the 19 that got me the 20. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm gonna roll with that one for a little while. The, the so, big one is, um... has betrayed me a bit. You're unsure. You you don't believe her, but you do not know where she's keeping this money. Yeah. So it's well, I uh, I rolled a ten. Yeah, same for the answer. inside check. Okay. I mean, as I said. So uh, let's see. I'll, I'll respond with. Um, if you cannot pay me what is rightfully mine now, then I will exact uh, heavy interest when you can. 
she stops you right there and she says, if you help me defeat the Duchess, you can have, the four of you can have half of whatever riches are contained inside of the ke the keep. Which will account for well over a thousand gold. I rolled an yeah. 11 inside check. <laughs> Does that tell me anything? You don't believe her. You think half, she's half, being uh, untruthful. Half, half is good. I like half. Because with the way things have currently been going, half of that effectively becomes mine. <laughs> we'll oh. see if it remains that way by the time the uh, the the quest ends. But yeah, okay. at this point That's... in time, I'm That's satisfied good. with that. As good as the offers we're gonna get, so uh... it's a better offer than we got from the Duchess. Who? Okay. So, so. my next question is. When was the Duchess replaced with the fourth door sister? Oh, cutting right to the chase, are we? Cutting right to the chase. You ask you ask this of the uh, I ask of Calypso. She oh, she says I do not know if the Duchess is Sophia. I honestly don't know. It very well could be that, but all I know is she is doing this to the city, and I need to, and we need to stop her. All signs point to that. Okay. The interactions we've had with the previous door sisters, um, the interaction I had uh, just before, um, you know, coming here. So, on pause, hope so. You know, so how do you propose, uh, you know, what strategy do you have for attacking the uh, Duchess or getting in? Surely this is something you've planned for a long time. The uh, and, Duchess uh, is, I have no, um, I do not know how strong the Duchess is. All I know is the amulet that she has is too powerful to be ignored. Quick question. While I was in the, um, I assume it was the same banquet hall that we were in previously, um, that also held the, um, uh, the entrance to the catacombs. Was that like barred off at all? Or like, is that still kind of just open? Uh, that was the the front door was locked no i mean when i was in the uh speaking to the duchess mm -hmm. the entrance to the catacombs that should have been in the, if i remember correctly it was just in the center of that oh, room the, the like the underneath catacombs. the statue yeah um, was that like blocked off or like collapsed at all or anything like that was or collapsed. was that just it was collapsed okay well that shoots that idea down Damn. If that was still available, then, I mean... Go in the back way. Yeah, just go back into the catacombs. We've got, like, three different entrances into there, and then... Uh, Actually, she I think says, the, sake, we bring, uh... might... the Calypso says... The strategy I think will work best is we all need to attack her together. She can only use the necklace on one of us at a time. Our goal should be to attack all at once That's and destroy the necklace before she destroys us. One, one thought, uh, in order to get Calypso in, uh, we, uh, bring her in fake chains. That was the mission. And to uh, eliminate her, but if we bring her in as a live prisoner, we can get close to the Duchess and then launch a surprise attack without having to like 
fight off other layers of defense. I Go like that. That was, just, that was very literally... smart and not uh, and not scorched earth like your normal tactics. You, Caitlin, get an inspiration dice for doing for coming up with that plan. I love it. He just stole that from Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's better than his scorched earth. Hey, hey uh, you know what? It's a it's an excellent plan. It is. It's a, it is. It, Gotta get all that loot. Can't risk burning down the building. <laughs> uh, as they're discussing this all, uh, Ham comes up to Sam. Oh yeah, Ham Sandwich has been here the whole time. Ham oh, yeah. says, hey, buddy. "Brother, can you can you forgive a, an old halfling like myself and allow me to join you in defeating the Duchess?" Of course, Ham. Let's put you in the front. The feels, the feels. Good. Calypso get, says, get, get there is like no time to waste. Sandwich. There is no time to waste. Put shackles on my wrists. Let's go now. No, we need to rest first. What? I, what? I, I, I've taken six like points of damage. Six Five. Five. Six. So Calypso, I asked Calypso. Calypso says there there is no time to waste because just like us, the Duchess has ears and eyes throughout the city. We do not act now. Okay. She will see us coming. Well then, we're gonna have to make a spectacle of this. Okay. Right. Clear everybody out of the building. Why would I do that? Because just walking you through the front gate is too easy. If I blow up the building, it looks like we fought. What? Ooh, give me a give me a persuasion check. Oh, you mean, oh blow up the uh, the door building. The building right you're standing mm -hmm. in. Blow Riot up the building number we're two. standing Riot in. Riot number two. God. I mean, the yep. hospital. Gotta, gotta make it. Gotta make it convincing. Gotta make it convincing. Oh. This is somebody who shouldn't have known who I was, who knew my name. I'm gonna hazard a guess. Knows my capabilities and would very much be remiss to not see the city burning if we were to bring Calypso in. Yeah, there's some logic in that, but there oh. is some twisted logic there. <laughs> I used the wrong dice, but that's okay because it's um, 24. 24 to do what? She, so that was uh, as, a persuasion check. As you say <laughs> this, she thinks for a minute. She looks around at all of the the work she's done over the months with uh with ham and with uh claude um and she says yes you're right sunset we need to make this a full show for the duchess for us to for her to believe us and she yells out she says begin the evacuations and send word to claude of our actions with that, the people start filing, helping the injured and the sick out of the hospital into the courtyard in front of the um, the house door. Uh, and roughly a half an hour later, everyone's out. Good. So as we're shuttling back and forth, you know, kind of escorting people out and so on, uh, I asked Calypso, so you know the amulet that you were talking about that she can only use on one of us at a time do, do you know if that's like a like a wisdom save or <laughs> a wisdom save what's that what's a wisdom save <laughs> uh no ne never mind never mind don't worry about it <laughs> i do actually thing. have a question about that um okay. that might be more directed towards the 
DM'd in Calypso, but who knows? Uh, the fact that she used the amulet on me wasn't the, the the Duke under the influence of the amulet. That you don't know. Hmm. I suppose that the presentation was different. Yeah. So it it it's probably a different affliction, but because now I am intimately familiar with how that amulet operates, at least on right. the receiving end. So no, the it, it, the the definitely the 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 gaunt look that he had really um Although, who knows what years of amulet influence would do to you. But yeah. I guess All at right. this time, there's there's no real indicator that he was under the influence of the amulet again. All right, at this time, the, uh, the hospital has been evacuated. And in the courtyard, she, uh, you're staying next to Calypso, and she just, you know, ruefully puts her hat back on, and she says, Sunset... Do your worst. I start by taking her hat. <laughs> give me a give me a slight hand. Give me a, a slight hand check. She's not she doesn't have shackles on yet. I know. I'm not uh I'm not going to slide of hand it. I'm going to reach for her hat, and if she tries to stop me, I'm going to say, first of all, you're a prisoner of war. And then I will roll. Or, and then I will cast fireball at the uh, at the door, um, or at the ramshackle front end of the door house. Yeah. Um, okay. She um, she resists for a second. She after a second she realizes what you're implying, and she lets you have it. Um, go ahead and roll damage for the fireball on the building. All right. First time I get to use these dice. Got some multiple D6s. I love it. Yep. You can, you can hear them. I still, I, I, I do not have enough to roll full damage, but I do have enough. All roll. the ninth agers out there are thinking amateur. Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I fully intend on ordering actually a bunch of dice specifically for uh, Fireball. fireballs. Um, okay, so do I want to do? No. No. Because I wouldn't. Don't over... I wouldn't if we had yep. to siege the place, so. Don't overthink it. Go with your gut. Yeah. No no, no. 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 Like. So uh, the thing is, like, I'm. I'm trying to think of it as if, like, we had to siege the place. Like, this is the opening act of we're breaking through the doors, kind of thing. Um. So I still need to roll one more. And the and the question was whether or not I was going to re-roll some of the damaged dice. I'm not going to, because I don't think it's going to be necessary. Total. Um. Okay. So that is twenty four twenty. Eight and uh, twenty nine plus um, what is that? Uh, it'll be thirty three damage. Okay. Uh, basically, the fireball engulfs the the new door, the the single new door, the one leaf of the door. Uh, and lights it on fire and um, basically blasts it off, off its hinges. And you watch as nothing happens for a few seconds, but then slowly you see the thin line of black smoke coming out of the top of the building. And eventually, after a few minutes, the entire front quarter of the, of the, of the building has caught on fire. And the whole crowd is sitting there in silence, watching House Door burn for a second time. Nice. I was gonna say, uh, if, if 
if things didn't start catching on fire, I was going to read you the description of Fireball, <laughs> which explicitly states, the fire spreads around corners, it ignites flammable objects in the area that aren't being worn or carried, and it is a 20-foot explosion. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> the whole front of that uh, building should be on fire, um, regardless of the damage rolled. <laughs> yeah, good so stuff. So with that, after after okay. in silence, the whole group watching the building burn for, a, I don't know, five minutes, Calypso turns to you and puts her wrists together like this and say, let us finish this. I tie her hands with rope. Yeah. Because we don't actually have shackles. And this way, they can be easily cut or possibly even slipped out of if... Is there a not tying roll I can make or something? No need for that. Ooh. Ooh. I have proficiency in disguise kit. Can I use this to simulate a really tight you know, binding rope, but it's actually just, you know, a quick release. Yeah, give me a, give me a check for that. What check would that be? I don't know. Performance? Performance. Do you want performance? Performance. Uh, maybe? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Well, while you're at it, do you want to add some injuries? As if she actually fought? <laughs> That's a good point. You know, Oh. Like, we burned down an entire goddamn building. How's, how about a little bit, bit of makeup? <laughs> that is true. Like, I could literally just disguise kit this for injuries. Yeah. Um, let me read specifically what my... Um... Uh, do, do, do. Features and traits. What Herbo. is? <laughs> Can we just like get some of the ash that's falling from the sky right now and just like rub it on her face? Like, look like she's yeah. kind of singed. I mean, that's that's fire. kind of that's kind of what I figure. I just, I want to see specifically like if there's anything that the dis like this disguise kit specifically does like. Pouch of cosmetics, paradigm. I just say, do, do, just roll a performance check, and I'll right, add yeah. it with advantage. With advantage because you're all working on it together, and you've got all the materials, and she's willing. Okay, so I get so uh, with the disguise kit, it says I get to uh, add my proficiency bonus to any ability checks you make to create a visual disguise. So I will do roll that it. as well. So if we're doing performance performance um that is going to oh oh wow um so that was a 19 plus four for performance plus four from my proficiency bonus um so that's going to be 27 okay so basically you 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 tie you tie her her wrists in a like quick release knot so from the outside it looks like she's bound but she can easily release herself very easily mm -hmm. Uh, also, you smudge ash into her hair and the side of her face, looking like uh, she was the target of a fire attack. And she also, you also take some mud from the earth and smear the ash on one side. It looks like it, like actually, she's bleeding from the head. You have very successfully uh, made it look like she is in uh, a prisoner and she was beaten. I would also like to add some actual like scorch marks to her clothing yeah um, that's, yeah, that's all, all there okay yeah. just I mean she definitely took a couple of fireballs if we actually fought her so she was about to there for a second I think yeah, yeah I'm honestly if my con wasn't plus five for saving throws I think we'd have been in trouble Alright, well, on our way to the palace. Um, yep. 
Sam, not Sam, Ham, steps up and he says, How will you disguise me? And how will you disguise the hippogriff? I think our explanation for the hippogriff is it just followed us. What if me and Ham stay on top of each other's toes and have like one tall purse? Yes. You need it. Yes. Do we have a trench you know, coat? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but you need at least three halflings and a trench coat to pull that off. I'm sorry. It just, it just doesn't work. You can't do two. It's got to be three. But no, no, it's a, it's a good idea. If you guys want to try it, go for it. <laughs> I love it. Yep. Probably gonna be closer. <laughs> there it is. You just I remember right, a, me, a, a um, one shot game that people you find created. like you find like a long cloak that can disguise the both of you. You can stand on each other's shoulders. You're not gonna test performance until you you get in front of someone, so And that's gonna be all on you guys. I can do nothing to help you. Yeah. <laughs> like I could apply all the makeup in the world, but it's not gonna help you if one of you falls off the other. <laughs> Um, all right, so you're gonna head to the the gates of the keep. Yep, and I'm going to be right back while we're doing that. Okay. Yeah, we're so headed as that you, way. as you head to the gates of the keep, as this group uh, of two elves, a dwarf, a strangely tall halfling. In a cloak and uh, Calypso bound in front of you you have to, the route takes you into the central courtyard here the statues of Sunset Kaelin and Sam look different these statues have all been decapitated oh that's unsettling. And uh, while there was only sparsely, this is the middle of the day, while these neighborhoods have always been sparsely populated, there is no one on the streets. <clears throat> As you okay. approach the keep, uh, the gates are barred as they were before. But up at the top of the, the gates, you see this lone figure at the top, and it is the Duke again. And he says, Have you brought Calypso? <laughs> Lo just kind of motions to her, since she's obviously standing next to us. <laughs> but yeah, she's, she's right here. Uh, I need and I'm back. Let's load. Give We're me standing a, at the gate. Give me a ah, okay. uh, deception check. Oh, God. <laughs> with, That's a with, two. With sunsets uh, at advantage. With sunsets um, assistance. That's a five. I only can try so much. <laughs> hmm. So, what, what, sorry, what, what's going on? So, the Duke is standing on top of the wall at the gate, and he asked me, have you brought Sunset? Or, I'm sorry, not Sunset, but Calypso. I just kind of motioned to her, said she's standing right there, and then I failed my deception check twice. <laughs> I see. Uh, yeah. Sam, I need you to do a performance check. I mean, I don't, I don't see how that would have been a deception check because she is literally standing right there. We never claimed to that she was a prisoner at this point. I don't think, did we? No, we haven't. Just give me a second. Give me a second. <laughs> All right, Sam, what'd you uh, roll? Roll a twelve. Okay, that's good enough. Without warning, the, the Duke says, um, 
the Duchess is waiting for you. And with that, the you hear like a and the gates swing open very slowly. You cannot tell who or what is opening and closing the gates. Okay. Uh, as a bit of performance, and I'll roll for this if I need to, um, I would like to uh, kick Calypso forward. No, you don't need to roll for but that. But like, <laughs> like, gen- like I, I mean, I'm not trying to actively like hurt her. Yeah. Like, I just, I want to like use my foot in a kicking motion to push her forward. You do so. Uh, and I'm assuming all of you go into the gate. Yeah. Yep. Including yep. the hippogriff. Yeah, loads ah. in the back with the hippogriff, so he doesn't have to make any more deception or performance checks. <laughs> As you enter the gate, you are in the grand hall of the keep. You enter, and again, the lone figure in the room is the Duchess sitting on the throne. And she says. Have you brought me Calypso? Can you Look, not see? Face palms, but says not. He's nothing. right here. <laughs> I even took her hat as a trophy. <laughs> the city burns from our battle. I do not wish to see her alive. I asked for her dead. Hmm. I figured you would want to do the deed yourself. Did she sure specifically ask for yeah, her she did. dead? She did. Oh, okay, my bad. I guess I wasn't there for that. Well, she didn't say dead. Blow. She said destroyed or something like that, but close enough. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, she, she didn't that's explicitly what she's saying say... now, no matter what she said before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 I we, I, uh, in your place, I would want to ensure her demise myself. So I have brought her so you may deal the final blow. All right. Do I need to make a deception check for that? No. (laughs) Okay. With that, she stands up and she says... You have brought me, um, oh, hold on. You have brought me my greatest enemy in Cantamont. And now I will deal not only a death blow to her, but a death blow to you all. The only threat that is left to me in this city. And as she stands up, um somehow to your eyes like it's like a a trip a a trick of perspective she starts just like becoming larger like she's coming closer to you but she's not and she grows to eight nine ten feet tall And before she started out as a slender, beautiful woman in a gown, and her form just expands, and she becomes, uh, rolls of fat start coming off of her, and her legs strain under the weight of her girth. And her body swells until it's pustulant and sweaty and gross and all around her on all of her like gigantic body parts now are the ma- uh, mi- mixed and interlaced pieces of the greatest <sighs> the greatest pieces artifacts held in Cantamont are all tied to her body Uh, chalices and breastplates and staffs all like tied to her so it's like impressing into her fat so it's like her fat is like kind of reaching around the stuff all sorts of items and she lifts up and she raises her head and she says Lord Sugarland 
will feast on his enemies tonight. And with that... God, I hate being right. With that, we will call this play session to a close. Obviously, you have found the last door sister. And uh, next week will be a straight up battle. Looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. All uh, right. My, la my last question always is, um, what should the name of this episode be? Uh, Nothing really big happened. I, I guess uh, mending yeah. fences or enemies are now no. friends or something like that or no someone's deceiving someone <laughs> i mean it's really just like the prelude to Honestly, like the I, grand battle so the call the, before the storm <laughs> the, the biggest thing that happened really. i think was was the reintroduction of the hippogriffs from session yeah. one <laughs> um old, old friends made new mm, nice the house oh, burns again oh I like that or one. Just call it deja vu. House house door burns again. I like no. that. Deja vu actually I think really works cuz not deja only vu. are we not only do we get the the hippogriffs reintroduced but we burned down <laughs> house door again. Um Sam was reunited with his ham sandwich. And it feels so good. Feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, that's it. If anyone's still watching, please like and subscribe. Um, next week's going to be the big old battle. We'll see how it goes. Bye, everyone. Uh, Bye, everybody. Bye.